At Supercompute last year in Denver, Colorado, I saw this 6U server or five nodes in a 6U chassis of servers, any way you count it. This thing, out of everything at Supercompute, really stood out because it was a creative solution to a common problem that cloud providers have. And that is, how do they get dedicated machines in a dense form factor to their customers that are tunable, that are isolated, and are affordable? And that's what this MyTAC tie-in server solution aims to do. The affordability is a big selling point of these systems, and while some of the components feel sort of consumery like the ATX boards, inside you'll find things like AMD EPIC 4004 CPU support. You can run Ryzen as well, there's room for GPUs, it's got dual power supplies for each one of these, and that's an important design point, is that each one of these servers is independent. There's no shared backplane, there's no shared power supplies in this system, again, so that each one of these can be siloed off and, and managed independently. In keeping with the enterprise theme, the, uh, our white, whitish gray cables here are connected to the out-of-band management, so remote management for the hardware is, is there. I.O. options here for expansion, again keeping the front serviceability, cold I.O. serviceability for a majority of the system. The only thing in the back are the power supplies and the GPU access if you have one. But again, these systems are really easy to pull out, service in the cold aisle, get back in, and get them running again. Let's pull out a couple of these blades, give you a hardware overview of what's inside each one to give you a better feel for what MyTac's done with this design. So we've pulled out the five nodes. Again, each one's independent. Power supplies are on the back side, which is the only thing, or I guess access to the GPU, but everything else is front serviceable, and the nodes yank out in the cold aisle. Yeah, which is, is kind of nice. They look really similar to an enterprise platform. Really, the one distinctive change is that they all have discrete uh, dual power supplies. So there's nothing shared between the chassis. The chassis is more kind of like a box around the nodes, uh, but that also has some advantages for certain deployments. Yeah, the chassis just has a couple little, uh, not ridges, but little catches, right, to slide yeah. the guys in on. And the power supplies, I know we've said it a couple times, but it's, when you think about blade chassis generally, they share a lot of resources, including sometimes uh, out-of-band management and power. These being distinct really isolates them from the other four nodes in that 6U enclosure. Yeah, it's just, it's really an item that's brought in through, they're a cost-effective uh, blade deployment. These don't have the features that you find in a traditional blade server, but again, it doesn't have the cost of a, uh, of a uh, traditional blade server either. Well, the cost is a big deal with these nodes because what MyTAC said is, uh, or maybe the customer said to MyTAC, we want a platform that's easy to manage, that's isolated from the others in the system and is affordable, and that's what, uh, what this design really lends itself well to. We've got a couple, you took the, the screw out. Let's pop these and start taking a look. And you can see inside, like I said, an ATX motherboard here. Kevin, what stands out to you on the motherboard itself? So it's a little bit different as you have this PCI cable that goes from a slot in the front to a slot in the rear. And this is so you could fit and cool a full-size graphics card and power it in the back of the system. Right, you've got one over here. What do we have in this one, an A6000? This is a uh, NVIDIA A6000. Okay. And we have a couple of different cards. So this one's a uh, 4070. If you had more, um, more work involved, you've got a uh, little L4, if you've got an inferencing job or you know, whatever else. Point being is it supports a pretty beefy graphics card in the back. Yeah, and for storage, there's onboard M.2 storage. And there is some configuration options that you could do. I mean, this chassis is pretty big, so you can put a lot of stuff in here. So this actually has two M.2 drives, right, that sort of uh, stack on top of each other? Yeah, it's a pretty interesting design to get a little, uh, a little bit less space. And obviously, these will be sitting underneath a uh, PCI card, but it does give you some flexibility to get a little additional storage in here. So in this slot, it's a little bit unique. It's a byte slot, but it has a split back, so you could put in a by 16 device, although it'd be connected in at a uh, byte electrical interface. The other thing, too, is we've got four DRAM slots. I noticed you've got RGB lights on yours. Yes, yeah, so you can put different options in here depending on if you're using uh, ECC memory or uh, just traditional uh, DDR5. But yeah, it's it's kind of consumer hardware inside an enterprise chassis. And well, and that continues with the, the decision tree on CPU. So underneath the, uh, the cooler here, we've got Epic 4004 CPUs from AMD. They sent us, uh, I think, six of them, five or six. We ran two different families in here. We've got all that data in the performance report. We'll link to that in the description below. But you could also run Ryzen in here. These are the little tiny. Yes. Like, yeah, we're, norm we're used to seeing the larger Epic uh, CPUs <laughs> in the lab. Yeah, we, we just happen to have those in. The big Epics, 
these are the much smaller epics. Yeah, they're about a quarter of the size. A quarter of the size. But still quite powerful, and more importantly, they're energy efficient by comparison to the TDPs in the uh, big boy chips. And just because they're small doesn't mean they can't get the job done. CSPs are using these boxes to be cloud gaming servers or dedicated affordable bare metal instances for people that want that in the cloud. Yeah, not everyone needs a gigantic server. One performance point that's different is that even though that's a, I don't know which one you have there, but up to a $15,000 chip for one, the little 4004s are actually still really good at single threaded performance. Well, yeah, so the larger uh, chips, you're going to have an advantage with cores. On the uh, smaller, more uh, gaming oriented platforms, you want a preference towards clock speed. You want a preference towards uh, better single thread performance. You're going to get that on the Epic 4004 that you wouldn't necessarily get with a server CPU. We actually went to our Discord to ask them, what would you do with a server like this? And unprompted, game. Gaming, yes. Yeah. Uh, so we worked with uh, a couple of the guys in the Discord, and which one of these was set up as a Rust server. I'm not a big Rust gameplay. I know you're starting your underwear, though. I've seen different screens that uh, my kids have gone through playing uh, Rust, and it is, there. it is kind of an early evolution point, but uh, Okay, yeah. so once you get past that, everything works fine, but we had our Discord hitting these servers pretty hard, and we ran that for a month or however long the season is, right? Yeah. Four or five weeks, and no problems. I mean, it just worked, and that's exactly what this is designed to do, to give CSPs something like this, that if you want to have a private gaming server, really, really simple and uh, effective at that task without being terribly expensive. No. Despite the Discord using the gaming server, and I guess I can't be too mad because that is one of the, <laughs> the typical use cases for these things, there is an enterprise side to this as well, right? With the IPMI and the dedicated nature of the design, the isolated design, for a bare metal host, it's actually pretty neat for that too. Well, yeah, IPMI, it gives you advantages. You can manage it in the same ways that you would have local access to the platform if you're sitting right in front of it. Mm -hmm. And that is a thing that you need if uh, you're having this in a colo environment where you may not be able to touch the system, but you want to be able to access it and manage it remotely. And how would you consider that versus running a VM or a typical cloud instance to do these same sort of tasks? Well, cloud instance, you're not going to have physical access to the host right. and you're not going to have your own dedicated physical host. So for certain areas that might be fine, but for areas where you need the most performance, bare metal is still going to be the avenue you want to pursue. So like I said, we've got a full report on the website with data for the top uh, 4004 AMD EPIC chips. We also ran data with the GPU in one. So if you want to get a feel for the overall performance of these nodes, we've got that in the full report. Otherwise, these are great systems. We've been running these in the lab for a number of weeks and uh, I didn't expect to find this at Supercompute in Denver. I'm glad I did. You're going this year to Supercompute and we'll have to see uh, what my tax got up their sleeve there, but uh, glad to have it. And like I said, the full report's in the description below. Check it out, like and subscribe for more.